speed burner. Speed burner is a product that Google recently purchased, not recently, but two years ago. And there's a plug, there's a, a lot of plugins for feed burner. But feed burner, you can go in and it makes it really simple to set up your feed for a podcast. Publish it into iTunes, to, it makes it uh, nicer so if somebody actually finds the feed in a Google search, it looks like a web page, it doesn't look like the Linux kernel bar fell over the screen. <laughs> Right? And there's a lot of podcasts that stuff in there. There's also a little bit of tracking built in, so you know where your listeners are coming from. But this will give you a really nice feed. It'll give you a feed. It'll be feeds.feedburner.com forward slash Kiwi Fruit Arizona podcast that you can then share. Put it on your business cards because it gives you a web page that looks readable with links to it. subscribe to Google, subscribe to iTunes. It's all right there for you. Yes. What if you already have a website? I do. Well, oh, perfect. Then you still want to use Speed Burner. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, and you don't have to use WordPress. I prefer WordPress because it's easy and it makes it simple. I have WordPress. Perfect. Just get the Feed Burner plugin there. Three or four. And then the only other plugin that you need is what's called a Kismet. Now, if you're a WordPress user already, you know you already have that because the Kismet keeps the spam on your comments. But if you want to get fancy, uh, get some kind of an audio player. So that when somebody lands on your site, they have a little button that they can click so they can actually listen to your show. And I use one, and it's actually called audio player. <laughs> it's not mobile friendly. It's a little flash player. But it's nice. It has a couple of neat features. It'll allow you to do a pre-roll or a post-roll, for example, on your website only and not Include it with the rest of your show. Huh? So if you want, come on in, Patrick. Everybody, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make, make a point, Patrick. Just special for today um, is wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, nice. Oh, hi. Bob and Master. That's right. Uh, audio player. Uh, it'll allow you to do things like you put in a, a pre-roll spot or a post-roll before your show. So if somebody comes to your site and they start listening and you really want them to subscribe to iTunes or you want them to make sure they check out any sponsors you might have on the page, then you could leave a little 30, 15 to 30 second message and it'll show up before the show. So it does a lot of neat features. WordPress, two plugins. That's all you need. That's it. And then, okay, cool, now I have a website and I've got a feed burner feed which is going to put my podcast into the almighty iTunes Now, I have a podcast. Sweet. Easy so far, right? Don't get stuck here. Don't spend a lot of time fiddling with your feet. <laughs> don't download a zillion different plugins. You don't need them. All we're going to do is take up your time, confuse you, and make it very difficult for you to actually do what you want to do, which is share your love of Arizona kiwi fruit, man. <laughs> That's it. Special promotion. Promotion. You have to tell people that you actually made a show. <clears throat> this is key. Well, there are ways to do this. Right? You can do it on Twitter. But if you start a Twitter account for your show, who's following? Nobody. Well, okay, that doesn't work. You can start a Facebook page. Again, a Facebook page with no followers doesn't really do any good. You can start a Google Plus page. You can do all manner of things for your show. And you can promote the heck out of it, but if you don't have anybody there, what you want to do for promoting your podcast, this is what I did, is you want to find clubs, message boards, organizations, businesses, that are focused on what it is you're talking about. So if you're talking about kiwi fruit, maybe you want to talk to some drivers. Maybe you want to find some kind of a fruit enthusiast message board. <laughs> <laughs> um, search Facebook for groups on Facebook. LinkedIn. Search groups on LinkedIn that are uh, that closely relate to the topic of your show. And then start drawing those people back to your website. Don't draw them to your Twitter feed. No. Don't draw them to your Facebook page. Don't draw them to your Google Plus page. Bring them back to your website. Websites where all the, well, that's where all the action happens. That's where they can subscribe to iTunes. That's where they can follow you on Twitter. That's where they can find your Facebook page, your Google Plus page, your LinkedIn page. Right? You want that traffic to come back to your website. Not somewhere else. Okay? Because the end game is you want your promotion.
pull down an audio file and record it because you're really excited about the TV crew. Using the landing page metaphor, really, is your landing page is your website. Because that's where people are going to find your show. Then once you get going, then you can use Twitter <coughs> to help spread the word. You get your, you get your Twitter followers to retweet your, to retweet the stuff, or likes on Facebook, or to reach shares on Google Plus. Awesome, but you still need to get started. And sometimes you have to get started in real life. Which is scary. Oh my God, I have to talk to people. <laughs> I don't know about that. That's the hardest thing. Is walking up to somebody and say, Hi, my name's Tom Burnside. I produced a show. And it's about kiwi fruit in Arizona. We're really excited about it. I think you'd like it too. Here's my card. That's super hard for. That might be easy for like me or you. That would be hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's really hard to do, but at the same time, it's really not. You just need to find out what a system that works for you. I worked in restaurants for 15 years before getting into technology. And as a, as a restaurateur, you have to be able to talk to somebody. You have, uh, this person just got a burnt steak and they are yelling and screaming at you or they didn't get a baked potato or, 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 or the soda's flat. So you have to be able to deal with that. You have to be able to stand there and take this with a smile on your face. And then get it corrected and make them your new best friend. It's all about sales. Uh, I'm a horrible salesperson. Oh, horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Unless something's coming to buy. Then. It's done. Production, publication, promotion. This is really the hardest thing for a lot of people. Is promoting. And just put it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. It's not going to work. Because you don't, nobody knows about it. The internet is huge. There are something like 200,000 podcasts on iTunes. And if you're producing your show and you want listeners you need to tell people that you've produced a show. You need to actually tell them, shake them, I've produced a show. Questions so far? Cool. Let's go back to production for a second. Um, when you are producing a show, is you want to make sure you're consistent. Consistency is very, very key. Um, one of the reasons why my show has been as successful as it has, I like to think, is because it's very consistent. We release the show on the same day every week. It's almost exactly the same time we run a long show. Our show runs between 45 minutes and an hour and 10. Usually the gap is closer to 55 to 105, but that's how long our show is. And every Tuesday morning, everybody knows they can fire by tunes so early. It's been that way for five years. Like TV, people get excited about a television show because they know that Castle is on Mondays at 9 o'clock. So where are they at 9 o'clock on Mondays? They are sitting on their couch in front of television. Especially 901. 901. <laughs> <laughs> that's why my stars. Yeah, that's why my TV are always screwed up. That's why. At any rate, at any rate, people know that, and they expect it. And then what happens when council goes off the air for a, for a break? Then you go, "Your Monday, it's nine o'clock. I'm going to sit here on the sofa. Wait, where's my show?" And they get all upset. And then they forget about it. And then you got to bring it back. Even if you don't make a show, let's say you go a year into it and you need to take a break. Because you can't produce quality 52 weeks a year if you're doing a week of the show. You just can't. Stuff comes up also. Holidays, uh, graduations, personal things. Doesn't matter. If you're, you've got your schedule already and for whatever reason next week you can't make a show, fine for that. Fine ahead. Make a show early or repeat an older show. That's, very, that's a very good tactic because that way, when someone goes to, to download your web, your podcast, they're going to find something. Even if it's something they might have already heard, it's still something that you're going to keep them trained to get the show. Consistency is key. Same with the length of time. If your first four shows are 15 minutes long, and then you come up with another show that's 45 minutes long, it's going to throw people off, especially if your new format is 45 minutes long. So if you start, find a good, comfortable length for your show and stick with it. But that means, what that might mean, though, sometimes you might go long. And especially when you get started, you might want to split that off into two shows. 
because I used to do that as well. And we didn't want a show longer than 30 minutes. And we'd go for an hour. Oh, what were we going to do? We'd split it up. And we'd have a special episode, special bonus episode that week on the show. So besides Monday, we'd have a Tuesday show as well, or Tuesday and Wednesday show. But we were sticking with our half hour format. Right. Another thing about production, I'm checking my time. Does anybody have any questions? If at any time you have any questions, yell them out. By all means. You said earlier about um, apps on Android or iPhone for the report of uh, yeah. iOS. Can you name a couple off the top? Um, on the iPhone, there's uh, GarageBand. It's five bucks. And there's another one by Blue, B L U. And I think it's like 99 cents. That's Android? No, that's on the iPhone. Okay. On the Android, there's one that's called iTunes. Actually, actually, it's called Voice Recorder Light is the free version. And then there's a, there's a paid version of that as well. I think that's what it's called. Uh, and it's a search for voice recorder in the market. And there's the one that sits near the top of that list is really pretty decent. I like to think it is. I used it a couple of times. Pretty good. What was I saying? Production. Um, I'll see you throw me out. Like <laughs> yeah, that's a question. Oh, oh, nice did. schedule. So, consistency is key. You, you, consistency is <coughs> is everything. And I